So what are our options for creative visualisations with Power BI? We can use the existing um, chart recommendations uh, if we get really, really clever. So what are our options for creative visualisations with Power BI? We can use the existing um, chart recommendations uh, if we get really, really clever. But in terms of um, having that flexibility for those creative outputs, um, there are some custom visuals in AppSource that do really well. So Synoptic Panel, Shelfies, Charticulated, Zenab, HTML Content are the ones that I'm going to focus on at the moment. There are a few others um, available to us. Uh, some might think of D3, R, Python, Visio, um, Plotly, and there's some SVG animators on the market now. But, um, but these are the ones that I'm going to focus on. PeelViz is a custom visual where we can import an SVG image to do simple transforms on SVG elements, provided that they're tagged appropriately as recognizable elements. And um, if we know SVG and HTML, well, we can recognize these shape elements as circles, ellipses, lines, paths, polygons, rectangles. Transforms can include color, visibility, height, width, scale, positioning, and area percentage fill. So we can have a custom shape that we can um, fill 60% top to bottom or left to right, 80% top to bottom, left or right. I'll be demoing a visual that I created where I took inspiration from the data itself, the data set about lies, and um, created a visual accordingly. So here I have a data set from a news organization that fact checks presidents and presidential candidate statements. And um, they've compiled, compiled a list of fact checked false statements, which are basically lies. And what I want to visualize from this, um, as it's only one person, I don't have a comparison or a baseline, is to just visualize the magnitude and the enormity of the false statements over time. Uh, there's a number of ways to do this. A king root line graph would work well, but as these are lies, I thought I might amuse myself. Um, if we think back to the beginning of the presentation, creativity can stem boredom. Um, and having fun is a great motivator to practice creativity and get those skills going. Um, and I'm going to amuse myself with the likeness of a president whose nose grows with each lie told over time. Um, I will change the likeness of the president because I don't want to be attacked with pitchforks or stir up any controversy. That's not my aim. Um, so here goes. So in Illustrator, I've taken an image, done an image trace, and very simply created a second element here, which is, now you can do this in anything, it doesn't have to be Illustrator, a simple rectangle with rounded edges, which I have exported as SVG. And when you look at SVG, you can see there's one great big path, and then that little element there, that rectangle with the width and the height, that many pixels, and then it's got little rounded edges on the side there. And it's called out as a rectangle shape, and that's what we're going to be manipulating in PureViz. So now we can go into our pure viz visual. I've already imported the um, SVG in, so I've skipped a few uh, steps. And I've placed in um, two, one measure, which is your lies measure, which counts the number of lies told over time, um, and a index. And if we go in and we edit, we can see we've got different layers. So remember that big path shape that we saw? Um, that's represented by this shape and then that little rectangle element. So this is what we're interested in looking at. And here we can do some modifications. So we could pick a custom color if we wanted to, but that's not what I'm interested in today. I just want to stick to the default color. 
got border color, border width, um, and visibility. So we might want to put some conditions on to show or hide um, the element. Um, but right now I want to go into properties. What I want to do here is um, I've adjusted the height just a little bit um, just to make it more aligned with the nose. But I want a con I want conditional format, right? So I want a um, function here to grow the um, length of the nose for each line told. And in here, I've done very, very simple. I've just chosen the lies measure, hit apply, and it's done. And so what you can see now is that um, here's the play axis visual with the date. And as we play through the dates, it will count the number of lies and the nose will grow by the number of lies over time. And the nose grows really quite quickly and um, eventually over the page. And the fact that it goes over the page is um, quite an impactful thing to watch. Jarticulator is a no-code designer. It's a flexible drag and drop tool. So you can drag your data onto your marks and then your marks onto your canvas to create some bespoke charts. Whilst you can create some interesting Cartesian plots, Jarticulator is probably most useful for polar, radial, and custom plots. And um, it contains four basic mark types which you can um, manipulate the data. And then these visuals, um, once completed and exported, have the ability for tooltips, drill trees, and interactivity with other Power BI visuals. So another demo I will be showing how uh, the articulated visual is creating a custom visual uh, that reminds me of the universe's and solar systems. So I have a data set about Marvel and DC movies. Thinking about what it is I want to explore, um, looking through what I've got here, I might want to compare the average meta score for company and see which one outperforms. But I also want to see the grain. So I want to see the number of movies by company, outliers, and maybe some patterns. But Primarily the information, the main thing I want to see is the average male score by company and the rest is secondary information. Interesting, but not quite as important. And so when I think about Marvel versus DC, I think about the universes, I think about the colours of red and yellow from the various characters and logos. So that's going to be my inspiration for the next visual. So I can start with a shape and pop it on a with canvas. I can then use the release here, drag that down onto the X axis like so. Then maybe I would like to change the color of these symbols, in which case I can come down to the fill and decide what I want to change the colors to, which would be the average meta score. Choose some colours that remind me a little bit of the universe colours. Maybe add a legend to that too. And because I'm thinking about um, universes, I might decide that I want a polar scaffold. I might want to think about um, these movies and their average Metascore ratings, you might want to think about them orbiting a larger object. And so that could be the total average, for example, of uh, Metascore ratings. So perhaps I might want to put another circle in the middle, increase its size. Maybe I want to also change the The fill. And pop in a little text 
up. And this could be the Aboriginal I'm going to see what more I can do with this and play around with, like, potentially come in and change something like that, group them differently. Then I'll stick with what I've got. I can also play with the axes and change them, bet them around, maybe add some uh, label text, maybe I want the movie names coming outside, but this will do for now. And then I'll be able to save and then export the visual and import into a Power BI desktop file, like so. And here are some various different versions of um, Charticulator visuals trying to replicate that sort of Marvel versus DC universe style. So I've taken inspiration from the universes to create a custom visualization. So here I'm quite happy that I've hit my brief. Primarily I wanted to compare the total critic schools average between two companies, so Marvel versus DC. And um, a bar chart might be better for that because we can interpret differences in length better than differences in colour. But because I have the data labels and I wanted to be able to see the secondary information, which is the individual movies are on the outside, um, the compromise works out. So then it is a custom visual that utilises the Vega and Vega Light declarative language, um, different from Charticulator, and it's more typey typey than it is clicky clicky drabby drabby. Um, and there's more control rather than encoding of data to marks and their layouts. Uh, Deneb has options for several different mark types, encodings, and um, data transforms. So there's um, a statistical API that can be utilized. Um, layering marks and drawing in graphs is a key benefit. So with Deneb comes great flexibility, enabling almost limitless creative potential. So what Deneb enables is more encoding options, gradients, patterns, textures, and custom shapes. And we can build these to create a variety of visualizations. So I have some survey data. I have the date in which the survey was undertaken, the opinions, legal under any circumstances, legal only under certain circumstances, illegal in all circumstances, and then the percentage of respondents. So what I really want to see is how will the opinions on abortion have changed between the first survey in 1977 and the present. So I see time as linear, sometimes as cyclic, but in this point, yeah, as linear. They have four categories. They're always illegal, always legal, sometimes okay, no opinion, and these are percentages. I don't want to see what the results were in 1977 and in 2019. I want to see the degree of change up or down. So that changes my thinking, so I don't need to do bars, right? So I want to see the degree of change um, between the two time periods up or down. I might want to think about I mean, one of those categories, such as no opinion, maybe at 20%. When in 2019, it might be 22%. And then I want to look at the degree of change. So I'll draw a straight line between the two. 
and that will give me some kind of uh, feeling for that. I might have a category that's always illegal, and then in 2019 it's lower. Between the two things you can see how it's changed over time. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing a slight graph. So what I've done now is I've created that initial slope chart. I have my line, which I've added an interpolation bundle with tension of zero. So what that means is I've made it a straight line between the two points in time. And you have your various encodings. So up here, I've encoded the year along the x-axis, the percentage along the y-axis, and then I've created the responses in colour. Consists of a layer, so this is the line, you know, it's layered. And what I've also layered is the text and point, or in this case, circles on top of the lines. So what I'm going to do now is, I've looked at that, I quite like that. I like the fact that I can see that um, over time, people are supportive of abortion and that um, they believe that it should be legal in schools under any circumstances. People that don't support abortion stayed steady between the two points in time. But I'm curious to see how that's changed over time as well. Has it steadily decreased? Or has there been massive fluctuations perhaps in response to events over time? So what I've decided to do is add another mark and I want to layer that in and I want to lay it underneath the straight line. And I want to, it's my secondary information. I don't want to draw attention to this because I'm really interested in this as secondary information. So I've made the opacity really light. And I've put an interpolation on that as well. So rather than um, being a straight line, well, they have a slight curve to it. And then you can see the translated time. So this works for me, I can see how it's changed, opinions have changed over time. It hasn't been steadily downwards. There's been an interesting point in period where the opinions have changed quite dramatically. And I get what I want from this visual. So here I've combined two different um, chart types, a typical line series chart type and a slope chart to create something new and different. Um, to me, for me, it's quite effective, but there is a um, potential that somebody else could misinterpret the slope here being a line of best fit instead of the slope between the last and first points. That at this point in time, that's it's not important. So there's a lot of creative potential with Zenith. We can create our own custom shapes and draw inspiration from the natural world around us or in this case literature. HTML content is a, another custom visual that enables creative outputs, utilizes CSS and HTML. And with it, um, it enables us in our Power BI reports to do things such as rich text formatting, embedding, so embedding of videos or other um, data visuals, potentially from data wrapper or Google charts, um, and also the use of SVG. Why would I use SVG? Um, in, with the HTML content over Deneb or PureViz. Um, and I would be doing that when I'm thinking specifically about targeting points on polygon paths or um, utilizing small and CSS animations. So I would call this novel. I wouldn't say it was effective novelty, um, but still here I've got some HTML and one, two, three blades, 
um, with polygon points and individual points have been targeted yeah. to change with data. So we can see that over time the width of the blades, these particular points, will change in shape. Again, not very effective, but a fun exercise. Then again with some HTML tags, we can create this one parameter here. We can use SVG and snow animations to create some interesting effects. And SVG filters as well.